To the Point with your host, News Channel 5's Kelly Dunn. With its sand and surf, its shopping on Worth Avenue, enough courses to be called the golf capital of the country, and its beautiful sights, our area is a magnet for tourists. But with the struggling economy, will enough vacationers show up this season to give a boost to businesses? Good morning and welcome to To The Point. Sometimes we complain about the tourists crowding the roads and making us wait for a table at restaurants, but tourism is one of the pillars of the South Florida economy. To give you an indication of just how big, it's estimated every 85 new tourists create one job. In Palm Beach County alone, the jobs of 70,000 people are tied to tourism. When the economy started sinking in 2008, the tourism industry suffered double-digit losses, with tourist tax revenue falling 22%. So with the tourist season, tourism season just around the corner, what can we expect this year? Joining us today with a look is Roger Amadon, the Executive Director of the Palm Beach County Tourist De Development Council. And we thank you very much, Mr. Amadon, for being with us today. Happy to be here. Thank you. And I'm joined by my colleague, Michael Williams. Always a pleasure. All right. Let's get to the point. Are we going to see more tourists this year than last? Absolutely. Why is that? Well, we have phenomenal teams. We have uh, four marketing arms for Palm Beach County that are supported or funded through bed tax dollars that we collect from each tourist that stays in a hotel. Those are the CVB, or the Convention Visitors Bureau, led by Jorge Pesquera as the president and CEO. He has put together a phenomenal team that has been able to dissect every single segment of how we will market to our potential tourists. There was a significant investment made in our website. We went from 80 pages of content to over now 1,400 pages. Okay. You want to know about Palm Beach County and what there, what there is to do as a tourist? You'll find it on that website. What does it mean in terms of people coming here this year versus last though? Well, we estimated that we saw over 4 million visitors this year. We're expecting about a 4 to 6 percent increase in that particular area of visitors, which then will relate to a 4, four to 6 percent in occupancy and average daily rates and ultimately bed tax collections. But is everybody just seeing, you know, a gradual kind of, you know, growing period here? Well, we saw a very significant growth in 2011. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fiscal year 2011. We were anticipating about a 4% growth in bed tax collections. Right now, as of last month, we're up 10% year over year. That's significant in this industry. What does it mean for what tourism pumps into our local economy in terms of dollars? Well, each year, um, the studies that we've done, it represents well over $2.5 billion. And as you stated earlier about the jobs, right now we're running about just about over 70,000 jobs. We've had the largest growth in job uh, creation in the county. And um, the state at the level of tourism jobs has also experienced about a 9% growth. And there are some barometers that you keep a close eye on that kind of give you that indication of the trend, right? Just about every day, every week, every month, there's a report that comes out from a company called Smith Travel Research. And they do report out to us what our occupancy is on a county level compared to other counties. So we are competitive uh, with other counties in, in the state because they're all vying for that same tourist that we are. But uh, we do feel that we have a better team. We have so many more amenities. We, we do have the tagline, the best of everything. And we do feel that Palm Beach County is the best way to experience Florida. Coming into the pivotal heart of our tourist season, our late autumn winter tourist season, what do the numbers look like? for that in terms of your advanced bookings? You know, currently right now, our occupancy has leveled off, but we're going to see a bit of an uptick for the last part of this year uh, for the October, November, December time frame. Uh, October is when our, our group season starts mm -hmm. up. So if hotels can have a good group base, which most of them do have, it'll uh, round out the year. And our occupancy should end up at the end of the year about 67% compared to 63% last year. Going into next year, again, it'll be about a 5 average about 5% increase. The top destinations in Florida, Disney has to, is like the top in the world. Yes. So Disney World is certainly, and then Miami to the south of us. So how do you convince the people who might be spending a lot of money to come over and travel to Florida and go to Disney to then maybe, you know, come down the turnpike a couple of hours to Palm Beach County or if they're going to Miami to make that trip up when they do have a better, you know, uh, an international airport down there that makes it easier for them that is, a huge, fly into. that is a huge advantage they have over us right now, but we're not mm -hmm. stopping. We're going to go after those international flights. Um, we have great friends at uh, PBIA. However, Miami and Orlando 
when an international travel comes over, those are the two sites they want to go to. What we want to do and what we are accomplishing through the efforts of the CVB, the Convention Visitors Bureau, is we want to get the traveler when they come down from Orlando to Miami or Miami going back up to Orlando. We've got billboards down in specific areas down in Miami near the airport. Come visit Palm Beach. Are you on the cusp realistically of bringing in more international flights? Um, I wouldn't go that far. I would say that we're working real hard to identify those, but um, the infrastructure that the uh, Fort Lauderdale Airport and Miami Airport has, it does overpower us. When you are talking about jobs being created by every 85 tourists that come to this area, what kind of jobs, if someone sitting out there right now is unemployed and thinks, I want to be in this industry, what can they look forward to? How likely and what jobs are likely to appear? Well, the jobs right now, as I talk to the human resource uh, managers in hotels, they're looking for desk clerks, cooks, and yes, um, chambermaids, um, uh, bus boys, bellmen. And then if you can get into the management levels, there's constant turnover or domino effects in our hotel industry, not only in this county, but throughout the country. Um, we will see different sales managers, different general managers, and executive committee, committee members leaving hotels to go to another destination, which then creates an opening. That then creates a domino effect from people from another hotel wanting to go and work at that hotel that has an opening. Country clubs throughout the county has been a, uh, a big push for us to maybe use less of the international uh, students coming over to fill jobs. And I think the uh, country clubs have pulled back on that, and now we'll be able to employ more of our local uh, residents into those you know, frontline jobs to service those members that are coming back down. What kind of programs are you creating or do you already have in place in the county to try and encourage people to come into the tourism industry and to get out of, frankly, the lower wage jobs and move into jobs that have more of a livable, sustainable career type wage? What are you doing there? Oh, great question. We've uh, started at the high school levels. Uh, there are three high schools in Palm Beach County with magnet programs focused in on hospitality and resort management. Um, I personally have been involved with the Palm Beach Gardens High School for the last 16 years as one of the advisory members. And to see those individuals go through that program as a freshman, graduate as a senior, and then go on to UCF, um, which has a great management program, and then come back to Palm Beach County and then start getting into the supervisor and the management level is really exciting. So the programs are strong. Talk to, as you spend your tourism dollars, what, what is your tourism budget and which markets nationally and internationally do you spend most of that money on? Where are the big gets for you in terms of bringing tourists here? Well, of the uh, total bed tax dollars that we collect, which is approximately $25 million this year, approximately $16 million of that will go towards strictly marketing. That's for the Convention Visitors Bureau, Cultural Council, Film and Television, and Sports. The Convention Visitors Bureau is the true tourism marketing arm for the county. But where are you going to find your tourists primarily? Well, right now we're focused in on the Canadian market. We know mm -hmm. that that is a market that is coming to this area. We have two nonstop flights from that particular area that will bring those visitors down to Palm Beach. We're also looking at how we can attract more of the German visitors. The English are coming, but the Brazilians, that is an untapped market for us that is going to be, uh, I think, um, uh, really flooding us here probably in about two years. We're making our, our inroads now. We've hired specific people to attack that market. So it's really going to be interesting. Once this um, U.S. Travel uh, Association of the United States, led by Roger Dow, he's really making a push with the White House for a, uh, a visa waiver program uh, to expedite uh, visas for these visa-friendly countries. So is the slump over for for tourism, I mean, are we, are you seeing, starting to see a rebound? Do you think that's going to continue? We saw an incredible rebound. As you mentioned at the beginning of the show, we were down 22% in overall bed tax collections. The worst we've ever seen it in, in, in the history of tourism since we started tracking it. Um, we, we know that we, we achieved great results in 2011. Uh, we're going to achieve some more results, great results in 2012. Um, will we have some dips? Yes. But we're, we are well positioned to respond to those. And we have, and we'll do it again if necessary. But to be clear, year over year, as you head into tourism season, you think your numbers will be up 
Yes. And you said by about? About 5%. And, of course, we all think about the beaches here because they're so beautiful, but there's right. a lot more of Palm Beach County in the area to see. How do you integrate your efforts with the rest of the county away from the beaches and, frankly, with the Treasure Coast because you open up a whole new region if they come up here? We've, uh, I think we've got some great partnerships, not only with our, our neighbors to the south, but also to the north with Martin County and then going down to Broward and even Miami-Dade. Um, and we even partner with folks over on the West Coast, um, over in the Naples area, because we know that our, our residents are visiting them right. and their residents are visiting okay. our coast. Right. Um, so we try to share on that. However, there is so much to do in Palm Beach County. We have 47 miles of beautiful coastline. Mm -hmm. We have our intercoastal with 50 marinas right here in Palm Beach County, up and down from Boca to uh, Jupiter. Uh, all the ocean, our uh, waterfront dining, all of our hotels that you can experience, not only as a resident, but for our, our, our tourists that are coming in, they get to have world-class service, world-class dining, and the shopping. Don't forget about the shopping. We have some of the best shopping, not only in the state of Florida, but in the country. Uh, culture. We have over 300 cultural venues in, right here in Palm Beach County. We are known not only as the golf capital of Florida, but also the cultural capital of Florida. Well, let's say that our doors are open, our arms are all open, and we're welcoming <laughs> them back. Yes, we are. All right. Thank you very much, Roger Amadon, for being with us. Good luck My in pleasure. this upcoming season, as we've always called it all these years. It's time for season. <laughs> you know, the roads get busier, but really not even that bad. Rush hour is still very manageable around here. Very true. Busy time. Good luck, sir. Right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Coming up next, our roundtable takes on some of the big political issues of the week after this. Now for our roundtable with News Channel 5 political analyst and coordinator of the American Studies Program at Lynn University, Dr. Robert Watson, and Brian Crowley, author of CrowleyPoliticalReport.com. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Pleasure. Glad to be here. Well, Florida, as we know, it's a place to be for Republican presidential candidates, and they are talking about topics that many, many Floridians are interested in. Texas Governor Rick Perry stopped in West Palm Beach for a private fundraiser. He was not talking publicly, but earlier in the week, he did attend a pro-Israel rally in New York where he attacked President Obama. It is time to change our policy of appeasement toward the Palestinians to strengthen our ties with the nation of Israel. The word appeasement and its historical connotations, what is he trying to do? Is he trying to win over the, uh, the Jewish vote in Florida? Well, you know, the, um, the, the, the Israeli uh, Middle East problem has been going on since 1948. No president has been able to figure it out. This president has been trying to some new ways and went a year ago sort of suggesting that he was going to fix the uh, Palestinian-Israeli issue within a year. Uh, it's a year later. He hasn't done it, and uh, people are jumping on that, and rightfully so. I read an interesting article today that a lot of the candidates, by a lot of the debate questioners, have really been given a free pass on foreign policy. Nothing yeah. substantive yeah. beyond these kind of sound bites. Amplify on that. I think you're spot on. I mean, think of the number of foreign policy crises facing us today. Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, Russia, Pakistan, North Korea. Uh, climate change, the trade deficit, we're not hearing anything about this. We've seen comments about Social Security commanding the headlines or Michelle Bachman's comments about vaccinating kids. Uh, so a lot of them have gotten the pass. And here's the kicker, a lot of them, like Perry, have been governors, so they don't have any experience in this particular issue. An irony of Perry criticizing Obama is apparently in his book, which I haven't read yet, but uh, the, the analysis of his book, he doesn't even mention the word Israel or Middle East peace in the book. Apparently he's never even given an address on it. So he's kind of Johnny come lately to the topic, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up. Uh, we need to all do a better job of asking these candidates to begin to address these serious foreign policy issues. You did bring up Social Security, and Mitt Romney was also in our area. He attended a fundraiser in Boca Raton, then in Miami, and he took a shot at Perry's position on Social Security. Uh, he, in his book that came out this year, said in his view, Social Security itself is a failure. He said, by any measure, Social Security is a failure. I disagree. I think by the measure of the tens of millions of people who rely on Social Security, it's a success. So is this becoming the overriding issue in this GOP primary? Well, it's certainly becoming a big issue. I, don't, I think the overriding issue is going to remain, and as we watched the stock market go all over the place last week, mostly down. 
Uh, you know, most people are getting up in the morning either looking for a job, hoping they still have their job, or they're worried about how they're going to make their mortgage or their rent payment. So that's the overriding issue, period. Uh, on the other hand, the secondary issue, if you're depending on Social Security or getting to that point where you're going to be depending within the next five or ten years on Social Security, that's a huge issue for you because many people who, in, especially as a result of this economy, are very frightened of the idea of losing any portion of their Social Security. Yeah, sure. I, I agree with Brian. But here in Florida, Social Security is a big issue. We have a large senior population. A lot of folks depend on it. Plus, remember, Mitt Romney's in Florida, Rick Perry's in Florida. Everybody's down here to raise money. Yeah. And you're raising money from not 18 to 25-year-olds, so they're going to be talking about Social Security down here. You know, the joke is the three keys to winning election, money, money, money. Palm Beach County's got a lot of it. Uh, every four years, all the candidates of both political parties visit Palm Beach County to raise money. And we're looking at the end of the third quarter of fundraising is the end of September. And in campaign fundraising, if you're raising a lot of money, that brings more money in. Money follows money. So everyone's trying to close strong right now, do a lot of fundraising down here in Palm Beach County. Although they'll be back in the fourth quarter yeah. and again next year. <laughs> money and momentum and perception. That's right. Still to come, a look at the polls and what they're saying about President Obama and the presidential candidates. We are checking polls here on To The Point, but a headline on one poll this week caught our attention. It is from the Political Wire website and says, most it's expect President Obama to lose, but he still leads. It's in reference to a new McClatchy Marist poll, and it shows by a margin of 52 to 38 percent, voters think the president will lose to the Republican, no matter who it is. By a 49 to 36 percent margin, they said they plan to vote for someone other than the president. And when it comes to matchups, those same voters said by a 46 to 44 percent margin, they'd vote for the president over Mitt Romney. Now, by 50 to 41 percent, they said they'd vote for the president over Rick Perry. So, dissect that one, if you well, will. Well, let me dissect it by also throwing out some, another mm -hmm. poll as well, the Quinnipiac poll that came out late yeah. last week. Uh, to me, one of the most interesting numbers in this, and it was a Florida poll. And, uh, you know, if, if whoever wins Florida is going to be the next president. And I think right now President Obama is in big trouble in Florida, and this poll certainly backs that out. You know, one of the questions they asked was, uh, was about whether or not he deserved a second term. And Florida voters, 53% of them said he does not deserve a second term. 41% said he did, which is a little different than voting for him. I mean, not deserving yeah. a second term. So it shows that there's great unhappiness yeah. with Obama's policies and leadership in I Florida. Th I think it is difficult for Obama to see a lot of clear paths to re-election next year. But I would also say that my favorite president uh, as an historian is Harry Truman. And there was a poll down Every week it's Harry Truman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm on oh, retainer. That's right. I'm on retainer from the Truman Foundation Board. Right, I have right. mention him once a week. But, uh, you know, Dewey defeats Truman. Uh, they were so certain in 1948 that Dewey was going to win that major polling organizations stopped polling a month before the race. You know, the joke in political polling is nobody, don't even read a poll until one month before the race. That's when most Americans really start to tune in and, and really start to engage. Plus, I think Brian and I, I think we'd all agree on this. If this economy gets worse, there's almost nothing Obama can do to win. If the economy gets a bit better, he has a path to uh, perhaps realize. And that's always been the case. At the end of the day, people vote their pocketbooks, and we all are hyper-focused more than a year out on the horse race numbers. Yeah. Uh, I read a Tom Friedman uh, piece the other day, the New York Times columnist. Uh, some still suggest there's a room out there for that mythical third-party candidate, that neither of the major parties really are getting yeah, enough this, traction uh, or jazz. Do you really believe that, though? It's getting, it would have to be a very well-heeled third-party mm -hmm. candidate. If you get somebody yeah. like Michael Bloomberg, who suddenly wanted to yeah. pour yeah. some of his billions into it, because it's a very expensive proposition yeah, sure to get registered in all the states. You need to be registered, the and the ballot. clock is ticking mm -hmm. to, for getting on the ballot. Be very Basically, difficult. you're saying no. In, in American yeah. history, no. there's only ever been one third-party candidate that beat one of the two major parties, and that was when Teddy Roosevelt, 1912, ran yeah. as a bull moose. But anybody but Teddy Roosevelt still wouldn't have done it. Is but, Palin, oh, sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry, but to the point that you were making, I think, to is the that, point. Uh, to the point that <laughs> you were making, what a plug. is that um, um, there's no indication with as bad as the economy has been that, the, that a year from now the economy will be significantly better. I mean, if we go in Florida from 10.7 unemployment to eight or nine, that would be great, but it's not going to be good enough. People didn't And I, I just don't party. see, it, I think it's getting increasingly hard for Obama to dig his way out of this. So will this encourage Sarah Palin to 
to finally get into this race. What do you think? What I, is she going to do? do you, I, think? you know what? As long as she continues to make a hundred thousand mm -hmm. plus for giving speeches and and uh, has the national press chasing around every time she takes a breath, she's making millions doing yeah. what she's doing. I think she has no interest at all in being president. Interesting that Mitt Romney said he'd like to see her in the race because it'd be more oh, interesting. Sure. Oh, and by the way, draw some support from Rick Perry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course, absolutely. Because Perry and, and Bachman and, and and Palin are all be running for the same crowd. I've said for two years she's not going to run. She's making too much money doing what she is right now and she's replaced uh, Jesse Jackson and Chuck Schumer as uh, the most dangerous place in the country is between them and a camera but, so I think she's even you know, those, all of us who have watched politics for so many years you know the one thing that I've always enjoyed in, in covering politics is that every election cycle is a surprise yeah. and there's bound to be in the next 12 months some other thing that's going to happen we're going to go really <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned yeah, that's exactly. right. and you stay tuned we'll be back in a moment <laughs> And some final thoughts today on the U.S. Senate race. Well, the road to the White House runs through Florida, but we also have a very important Senate race. All the major political handicapping groups are saying that this Senate race with Nelson in Florida could be the one to watch. Brian, you know what we're waiting for? Exactly. The Crowley closer. The Crowley closer from Crowley Political he Report. He was kicking uh, me under the table. <laughs> well, it's interesting that in the Republican primary, despite the best efforts of Adam Hasner, George Lemieux, uh, Mike McAllister, and the rest of the crowd, 58% uh, of Republican voters are undecided. And these are Republican voters that are keeping a very close eye on the races this year. So it's a little surprising that there's still 58% undecided. Mm -hmm. and. Of those who have decided, George Lemieux's got 17% of the vote, and according to Quinnipiac, and uh, Mike McAllister has 11%, and Adam Hasner remains a distant third. Mm. So that's an interesting development. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to follow it right here on To The Point. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Dr. Watson, Brian Crowley, Michael Williams, and thank you. Have a great Sunday. There you are. Bye-bye. <laughs>